Okay, so welcome to this problem on uh, another very famous problem in probability called the Newton Pepys problem. Newton Pepys problem. And the Newton Pepys problem is very, very simple. Um, Pepys wanted to know um, which is more likely, which outcome is more likely, getting one six if you throw six dice, six dice, so outcome. Uh, sorry, greater than one six. You want at least one. Uh, sorry, greater than or equal to at least one six uh, when you throw six dice. So that's uh, one experiment. Uh, or is it uh, greater than or equal to two sixes when you throw twelve dice? Or greater than or equal to three sixes when you throw eighteen dice? So basically, Peeps wanted to know <coughs> if I throw six dice. Uh, and I get one six, there's a probability that I will get at least one six. Is that probability greater than the probability that if I throw two dice, uh, sorry, twelve dice, I will get at least two sixes? And is that in turn greater than the probability that I, if I throw eighteen dice, I will get greater than or equal to three sixes? So which is the most likely outcome, basically? Which of these is more likely? Okay, so I don't know whether this was a gambling problem years ago, you know, uh, you could bet on someone throwing 6 dice, someone throwing 12 dice, someone throwing 18 dice, and he maybe wanted to know which one was more likely because he wanted to place his bet on the more likely one. Um, but anyway, uh, he, I believe, um, believe um, sent a letter to Isaac Newton who um, worked this problem out for him, and uh, that's what we're going to see now. So, uh, the probability um, so let's firstly work out the probability of this first option up here. You throw six dice and we want the probability that you get greater than or equal to one six. Uh, now, as of, uh, it's often, so well firstly let's just consider what our sample space is. So we have a sample space and we throw six dice, each of them uh, can have six possible, um, can take on six possible different values. So we have six to the six uh, different outcomes in our sample space. And we want the event, E, uh, we want to know what the probability of this event is, which is um, the, um, the event that you get at least one six. So any outcome where you get at least one six is in this event. And this again is a very simple sample space because it's finite. Uh, so um, so um, every, every outcome is itself in a unitary set. Uh, by itself, which is an event. So the event that you get a specific outcome has a probability that you can ascribe to it, which is just 1 over 6 to the 6, um, which is always nice when we get something like that. So in fact, all we need to know is how many are there in here, how many um, outcomes are there in here, and just multiply that by the probability of um, of a specific outcome, which is 1 over 6 to the 6, uh, because all of the outcomes are equally likely. Okay, um, so that could be our approach. So the problem is it's quite difficult to actually work out how many are in here. Uh, so instead, what it's easier to do is work out how many are in um, E complements. So how many? Uh, instead, it's easier to work out what E uh, how many are in E complements, and then we can take uh, we well we can find the probability of E complements and take one minus uh, the probability of E complements. So the probability of E is equal to 1 minus the probability of E complement. So, um, okay, so um, we throw one dice, uh, sorry, we throw six dices, and why have I done waited to do this video now? Why couldn't I have done it, you know, ages ago with combinatorics? And the answer is I could have done it with combinatorics. Um, the reason I'm doing it now is to illustrate a... Um, a principle of um, the principle of independence. So we're going to apply independence here uh, because effectively we have six different experiments, six independent experiments, which is the throwing of each dice. Um, so uh, the probability of E complement, E complement is the event that you don't get a single six, don't get a single six, single six. And if you think about it, that is the event that. Uh, dice 1 is not a 6, so dice 1, uh, we could label that D1, uh, so let D1 be the event, dice 1 um, is not a 6, not a 6, uh, and that intersection D2 
intersection all the way up to intersection D6, uh, where all of these events um, are uh, that dice, uh, let's say K, uh, is not a 6. So you want the intersection of all of these events. And because um, the setup of this is such that the events are independent, i.e. D1 is independent of D2 is independent of D3, this is equal to the probability that D1 does not get a 6, times the probability that D2 does not get a 6, times dot 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 times the probability of D6 does not um, the probability that dice 6 does not get a 6. Okay, um, so um, why, why is that the case? Why are these, ex why are these events independent? Um, it is because they are separate experiments also, almost. Um, and therefore the outcome of one experiment does not affect the outcome of the next experiment. Um, obviously this is where uh, we leave the realm of mathematics and go into the realm of more sort of empirical evidence, you know, uh, and the interpretations of probability in the real world, so it becomes more difficult. Uh, but hopefully you agree that the pr probability, um, the probability, uh, the probability of me not getting a six, uh, the, well, the event that I don't get a six in the first roll does not affect whether I get a six or not in the second roll, and therefore the probability that I don't get a six in the first roll uh, and that I don't get a 6 in the second roll should be the probability of the two times together. Um, so the probability that I don't get a 6 in the first roll is 5, 6. Then it's the same for all of them. Uh, the probability that I don't get a 6 in the uh, second roll is 5, 6. Uh, all the way up to times 5, 6 here. So it's 5, 6 to the power of 6. Okay, uh, therefore the answer of probability of E is equal to 1 minus 5, 6. And to back up that, you know, this was independent, well, let's try and do it through the combinatorics approach. Um, so we can ask how many uh, total outcomes are, are in E complement? Well, uh, how that means that, um, that the first dice can take on five possible values, the second dice can take on five possible values, you, it can take on all values except six. So how many total outcomes are in E complement? Well, it's five to the six, basically. So uh, if we just times five, six by the probability of a specific outcome, i.e. six over one over six to the six, that is the overall probability of E complement, and therefore the probability of E is just one minus that. Um, so indeed, we do get the same answer if we take the combinatorics approach, which which is, you know, it's a nice sort of um, backup to the fact that um, these events are independent. Okay, uh, so um, I haven't got a calculator. Oh, uh, yes, I do have a calculator. Um, so we will calculate uh, what this value is. So um, 5 divided by 6, uh, answer to the power of 6, gives us about a third. 1 minus that you get uh, 0 0.665 is equal to 0 0.665. So a little, I think that's under a third. Yes, it is under a third. So a little under a third. OK. Um, so uh, now let's do the probability of the second one, which is slightly more difficult. Again, uh, we, will, um, we will do it via the independence property. So. We want to take, again, the complement. So the probability of E is equal to 1 minus the probability of E complement. And E complement now is the event that event that you don't get that either you get no sixes, you get no sixes, no sixes, and it's union, which is uh, uh, the mathematical way of saying or, the event that you get only one six, event that you get only one six. And you will notice that uh, those two events are totally disjoint. So I can apply axiom two of our probability to space to say that this is, let's call this um, A1, this event here, that the event that you don't get a single six. And let's call this event that you only get one six, A2. Um, so probability of A1 union A2, because A1 and A2 are disjoint, is just equal to the probability of A1 uh, plus the probability of A2, i.e. I don't need that minus the probability of A1 intersection A2 because the intersection of A1 in, uh, and A2 is just the empty set and the probability of the empty set is equal to zero. So it becomes this. Okay, um, 
and what is the probability of A1? Well, I can apply the exact same principle that I did in the first one, which is that A1 is um, effectively the intersection of the events that dice 1 does not get a 6. So A1 we could write as the intersection of i is equal to 1 to 12 of di, where di is the event uh, that um, dice i does not get a 6. Get a 6. And then because of the independence of the problem, the independence of the experiment of throwing each dice, oh dear, that's not what I want. Uh, oh dear, ignore, ignore that, ignore that, that isn't important. Okay, um, so uh, what were we doing? Oh yes, we we're doing probability. Probability of A1, therefore, is equal to this intersection that I just wrote down, so I'll rewrite it out, uh, di. And therefore, the, probabi sorry, the, the probability of that is equal to the probability of this intersection, which is equal to the Euler product, i is equal to 1 to 12 of the probability of di, i.e. that just means, if you're not familiar with this symbol, it just means multiply uh, all of these together, pd1 times pd2 all the way up to pd12. So it's just like the sigma sign, but instead of adding things together, you multiply them. Okay, um, so... Um, what next? Um, so, um, for pi, uh, this is the Greek capital letter pi, P for product, uh, whereas this is the capital letter sigma, S for sun. So, you know, that's a nice little bit of um, notation making sense. Okay, um, PD, right. Okay, so the probability that of event of DI happening, of the event DI happening, is again equal to 5 sixths. Uh, it's the event that dice i does not get um, does not get a six. Um, so there's five uh, the six possible outcomes. Uh, five of them satisfy what we want. So the probability is five six. So you could view it as you could view if you wanted to do it rigorously. You've got your own little sample space for die uh, di, which is we could call sample space i. There are six possible outcomes. Each of them is equally likely. Uh, therefore, the probability is five six because. Um, because each of it, each outcome is itself an event, it's sitting in a set on its own, and that's an event. Uh, they're all equally likely, therefore they must all be mapped onto one sixth. And therefore, if I take the union of all five of five of them, um, they're all disjoint. So I just add them together, and I get five six. So this is five six to the power of twelve. Okay. So that's um, probability of A1. Now we need the probability of A2. Now A2, remember, was the event. I'll rewrite it out. Event that um, you get 1 6, 1 6, and um, then, um, and then uh, 11 non sixes, non sixes. Um, so that's a little bit more complicated. And for this one, we will go to um, combinatorics rather than uh, trying to do it with independence. Um, so we're looking at all the events where you get one six and then eleven non sixes. <clears throat> well, firstly, uh, if we consider again the total sample space of what you can get, uh, there are this time six to the twelve possible outcomes. Um, so uh, we're looking at a subset of these, which is a two, and they have to have only one six. So firstly, the um, 6 could go in any one of the 12 dices. So we've got 12 dices, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And um, the event could, an outcome would satisfy this event if only one of them gets a 6. So any one of these 12 could get the 6. So there's 12 possible places you can put the 6. Uh, now, for every place you put the 6, so imagine you put the 6 here, then all of the rest of them have to take non-6 values. So this can take on 5 different values, so it can take on 5, I should put times 5 there. This one can take times 5, this one can take times 5, this one can take times 5. So you get times 5 to the 11. Uh, so the overall probability is going to be, this is the total number of outcomes you have in this set. So you want to multiply the total number of outcomes you have by the probability of a single outcome, because all of the outcomes are in their own little 
set uh, with probability 1 over 6 to the 12 and all of those sets are indepe uh, not independent are disjoint and therefore axiom 2 applies and the probability of A2 is equal to the sum of the probabilities of all the uh, singleton outcomes, singleton events. Okay, um, so um, pull out one of these 6's and let it cancel with the 12, you get 2, and then you get times 5 over 6 to the 11. Okay, that's good. So, the probability of E complement, our original thing, E complement, is equal to, um, uh, it's equal to this one up here, the probability of A1, uh, plus the probability of A2, so 5, 6 to the 12, uh, plus 2 times 5, 6 to the 11th. So what we'll want to do is pull out one of these 5, 6's so that we can factor out 5 to the 6 to the 11. Then we've got 5, 6 plus 2, um, which uh, 2 is 12 over 6, um, so we get 17 over 6 there. Okay, uh, so that is the probability of E complement. So the probability of E, which is the probability uh, of uh, getting two 6's, at least two 6's, uh, whenever you roll 12 dice, is equal to 1 minus 5 6 to the 11, 7 6. So, calculator back out. What is that number? Uh, 5 divided by 6, answer to the power of 11, times 17, divided by 6, and then 1 minus that answer. And you get 0 0.619 to three decimal places, 0 0.619. So what was the probability of the one before? It was closer to two thirds than that. So you were better off doing option one than option two. Okay, so another piece of paper we need. Um, I will use this piece of card here. Okay, um, so uh, the final option, the final one, and this is the most difficult one, obviously. Uh, the probability, uh, so let event E be uh, the event that you get that you get at least three sixes when you throw 12 dice. When you throw 12 dice. You throw, uh, oh not 12, 18 dice. Okay, so you've got your sample space now. How many possible outcomes are there? Well, every dice can take on a value of, um, can take on a um, six different values. So there are six to the 18 possible values. So the probability of a singleton at of a specific outcome is 1 over 6 to the 18, so this is our sample space. So all of the outcomes again are in their own little set, and the probability of those little sets are, is 1 over 6 to the 18. Okay, and we are uh, have E in here, and once again it's going to be easier to ask what is the probability of E complement, and then take 1 minus that to get the probability of E. So probability of E is equal to 1 minus the probability of E complement. Okay, so the probability of E complement then um, so, is e, e complement is the event that you get you get uh, less than or equal to two sixes, uh, which is the union of the event that you get no sixes. Event no sixes, no sixes. Uh, union the event that you get one six. Union the event that you get two sixes, and all of these events are. Um, are independent, are not independent, are disjoint. That is a good example of um, a mistake people often make. Uh, confusing independence for disjointness. Independence is this probability, uh, is this property um, of two events um, where uh, the probability of the intersection of the two events is actually the probability of one event times the probability of the other event. That is completely different from being disjoint. Disjoint is a more powerful property in many ways because that comes directly, then you can apply directly axiom two of probability spaces and say that, you know, the probability of this union is the probability of this one plus the probability of this one plus the probability of this one because these are all disjoint. Uh, so we'll do that now. The probability of E complement is the probability, let's call this A1, A2, A3. It's the probability of A1 plus the probability of A2 plus the probability of A3. Okay, 
And then what we're going to want to do is work out what the probability of A1s, A2 and A3 are. Okay, um, so the probability that I get no 6s, well, again, I could write that as the intersection of... Uh, I could write A1 as equal to this intersection di i is equal 1 to 18 now, which is where di is the event that dice i does not get a 6. Event dice i is not a 6. A6, and then I can apply independence again and say that the probability of AI, A, A1 rather, is equal to the Euler product i is equal to 1 to 18 of the probability of di. Uh, which is then equal to 5 sixths, so we get 5 sixths to the 18. Okay, the probability that I get 1 six. again, this is a, similar to the previous, um, previous one, uh, the probability that I get 1 six. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to work out how many elements, how many outcomes satisfy that condition, uh, i.e. How many, how many outcomes are in the set A2, and then we're just going to multiply it by 1 over 6 to the um, 18, which is the um, probability of a singleton outcome. And because they're all independent, they're all disjoint, they are all disjoint. If I say it enough times, I will get it drummed into my head. Because they're all disjoint, you can just add up the probabilities, um, and they're all equally likely as, uh, by conjecture. Uh, by by assumption rather than rather than conjecture. Conjecture finds sounds far too impressive. Um, A2, the probability of A2 then. Um, is how many events are in A2, how many events, how many outcomes rather are in A2? Well, again, you've got 18 dice, 1 to 18, dice 1, 2, 3, etc. to 18. You can put 6 in an arbitrary position, so you can put it in 18 different positions, and then once you've fixed where your 6 is going, every other one can have 5 different options, times 5, etc. So you get times 5 to the 17, because you've only got 17 dice left. Uh, so the probability of A2 is that times the probability of a single term, which is 6 to the 18, 1 over 6 to the 18. So uh, you could factor that out as 18 over 6, which is 3 times 5 over 6 to the 17. Okay, uh, so that's the probability of A2. Now the probability of A3. Now, this is the new one. Uh, so we've got 18 dice. Now you have to somehow pick... Uh, where you want to put, I'm not going to draw out all 18 dice, where you want to put two sixes. So you can fix two points where you put two sixes. How many different ways are there of attach of putting two sixes somewhere? Well, uh, the first six can go in 18 different positions. The second six can go in 17 different positions. But you will overcount uh, because the first six could go in one and the second six could go in two, but then the first six could go in two, and the second six could go in one, and you'll count that option twice, and we don't want that option counted twice. That is the same outcome. So uh, it's um, 17 times, uh, sorry, it's 18 times 17, but then we're going to have to divide by two, because we've overcounted by two. So it's 18 choose two. Um, and then we want to times that by, uh, you can then put uh, five different things in all the remaining slots. Uh, so 5 to the 16. Okay, um, so, um, and then we want to divide that, obviously, by uh, 6 to the 18. So this is equal to, uh, pull out two sixes, 18 times 17 divided by 2 times 36. So I've pulled two sixes out of here so that we can just have 5 sixths to the 16 there. Uh, so cancel the 6 from here, you'll get... Um, 3 times 17 over 2 times 6, which is 12. Uh, 5 sixths to the... Oh, you can't see this. 5 six, uh to the 16. Okay, excellent. Uh, so we just now need to work out what is this number plus this number plus this number, uh, and then 1 minus that. So probability of E complement is equal to 5 sixths to the 18 uh, plus 3, 5 sixths to the 17 plus 3 times 17 over 12, 5 six to the 16. And then the probability of E is 1 minus that. So let's work out what the probability of E is. So uh, get the calculator out. Um, I'll put it here. Move that there. OK. So um, 5 divided by 6. Answer to the power of 18. So that's that. Uh, then we want to add on, I don't know, answer plus... Um, Three times, now I have to enter it properly now, we've got so much. Five sixths to the power of 17. 
Okay, let's just do that bit. Uh, then plus 3 times 17 over 12, 3 times um, 17 divided by 12, 17 twelfths, uh, times, far, uh, we'll have a fraction, times 5 sixths to the 16, and I hope I've entered all that properly. So you get, ah, this looks good, and then 1 minus that we get is equal to the probability of E is equal to 0 0.598, so it's even lower. So the answer to the Newton Peeps problem is that you should go for the first option. The probability of getting at least one six if you roll six dice is greater than the probability of getting at least three sixes when you roll 18 die, and it's greater than the probability of getting two sixes when you roll um, 12 die. Okay, I hope you've learned something from that video. Thanks for watching. In the next video, we will go on to conditional probability.